everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me today I have Norman Sanso. As the ref Metrion Sintos. Uh, okay. And moving on from that awareness, I also have here with me the awesome brownie reviewer Silver Quill. I prefer to be called the awesome and nonsensical Silver Quill. That's uh, the awesome and nonsensical Silver Quill. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, today we are going to very sensibly, if possible, review issues number 21 and 22 of the MLP official comics. That is uh, the Manhattan, Myst- Manhattan Mystery Diamond uh, Steel or whatever. I don't know if it, this one has a title or something. Uh, that was uh, written by Ted Anderson and with art by Agnes uh, Garbowska. With, of course, a color by Lauren Perry, one of the first comics that's not been colored by Heather Breckel. Mm, kind of, because we didn't really um, take a look see at Heather Breckel's other work in the micro series. Well, this is just, it kind of impresses me. This is the first time that I don't see her name attached to a comic. Yeah, yeah. In the main line, that is, yes. And it's funny that this comic in particular stands out for the, uh, for the coloring artwork. Well, in this very short two-part story arc. We have uh, a part of the main six, a fraction, actually, that is Rarity, Applejack, and Fluttershy visiting the town of... Uh, the city, more like, of Manhattan along with Apple Bloom and accompanied by Bab Seed, whom we haven't seen... Uh, actually, this is the first time we see her in the comics, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, they are assisting as, uh, a show uh, by none other than the great and powerful Trixie. And, of course, during this show, something goes wrong, and one of the jewels uh, that was used as part of one of Trixie's uh, magic tricks disappears. And this is because there's been a uh, a burglar going around the city, stealing diamonds and other uh, precious items. And at first, it looks like Trixie is helping uh, helping the police to find out who the responsible one is, but... She gets framed, and it's only a run against the clock, uh, race against the clock, before uh, Trixie gets imprisoned uh, to find out where the real culprit is and what happened with that disappeared uh, gemstone. Oh, my. That is the skinny of it, and I think we're going to go further discussing what the the, the, the issue the, the story is about as we are analyzing the issue. Mm-hmm. So... After this, it's all spoilers. So if you want to read the comic, go ahead and and, and read it. It's it's definitely worth your time. Give it a give it a good give it a good look. But from now on, it's spoilers. So uh, watch out, guys. So okay, I, I I say we do the same thing that we did on, on the last review and go uh, alf- uh, inverted alphabetical order uh, to say what we think of this comic. Mm-hmm. So I say we start with silver and then we end on me. Cool. Okay. okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Alrighty. Well, there there's several just fun ideas in this comic, uh, but first and foremost, I really do want to compliment the the coloring because it's just sort of it has this very unique, almost watercolor look to it. Art style with the line art can be a little different. I mean, some of the expressions they, it's almost a uh, cutout. <laughs> right now, I'm looking at a page where the diamond has just disappeared, and you look at uh, Babs's expression. Just like, good lord, good lord, girl. Did someone cut you out of uh, cardboard? <laughs> and so she got bored and had to go to the bathroom and left a cardboard cut out of herself. <laughs> yeah. okay. But, I, but I, I do find the artwork in this intriguing, as is the fact that many of the ponies move like humans in this. There's a lot more artwork that features the ponies standing on two legs and... Uh, you know, using that to emote. And it's a very strange sight. It kind of, kind of brings you back to My Little Pony Tales, doesn't it? Oh, God, no. I won't go back there, man. No, no, no. <laughs> Not there again. Not there again. <laughs> Never again. But, um, <laughs> but here I am talking about the art style. So the art style is, is fascinating. But I love several of the concepts here. One, this is not really a story about Applejack, uh, Rarity, Fluttershy, and even Apple Bloom. This is really Trixie and uh, and uh, Babs' story. Yes, it, I it, will agree. All the significant interactions between them, all of the character arc 
growth, development is on them. Our main heroines are really there just to sort of say, hey, this is still part of our main line, pun intended still. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But also just the concept of Rough Diamond, the the thief, who apparently the greatest thief in Equestria, who, as they describe, could rob a bank while described as Princess Luna. (laughs) I'd like to see see that. These ponies are usually presented as so altruistic and lighthearted and fun, and oh, wow, this one's resorting to crime. And given how idealistic this world is, I think she's doing it for the giggles. I completely agree with you. This this universe, the universe of MLP, uh, Friendship is Magic, is that it's very similar to how Star Trek kind of is. Not like in Star Trek there is no money. People work to better each other. But in this world there is money, but it's not the focus of their life. So the fact that there is a, the concept of a thief, it does come more like a, a, a prankster who wants to spread chaos rather than a, a, a someone who wants to get rich. So yeah, that is, that is a really, really interesting idea. I mean, it, it is true that like the Flim Flam brothers always seem to be going after a, a, a scheme to make money, but it's never, you almost think that that's just who they are. Well, here's the thing. In Hurricane Fluttershy, there have been evidence that ponies do, well, uh, there's mean ponies. They're never nice ponies. And the way that, well, that one cherry seller sold cherries to Fluttershy was a bit of a crime. So there are greedy ponies that do things because they want to get rich fast. And then and then they get assaulted in my videos. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. But, it, but it's, so, it's so not the norm. I, I hate to sound like a cynic. Here in here in human world, mm-hmm. money is unfortunately a very strong driving force, and people we almost kind of assume by default people will be greedy. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate, but perhaps a very accurate assessment. Mm-hmm. It's sort of the inverse in uh, in Equestria. We assume they're usually more altruistic, and it's very startling when it's when there's a pony who's in it for the mula. But a final observation before we really get into the meat of it. The technology level mm. in this is pretty... It's like an active Richter scale up and down. <laughs> oh, yeah. they, have, they have working subways, which we did not see in uh, Rarity Takes Manhattan, but it's not out of the realm of the possible. Mm-hmm. They have microchips. <laughs> All right. That There's is like, so weird. Yeah. That but is it's a, so weird. <laughs> but it's a magical microchip, which means they probably built it and shrank it. <laughs> right. But then we get to the second issue with the security system for the museum. And I'm just like, really? I feel so bad for the Night Watch that has to string that up every night. <laughs> I'll take it down the next day. They have got to be paid overtime. There's that money thing again. So that's my overall opinion. It's a uh, it's a fun comic. It really doesn't grab me as others have in the past, but it's fascinating to see it focus on Trixie and Babs, two negative characters who are working to working their way back into good grace. Although, if I really want to take this off topic, we could talk about the debate of should Babs have been punished. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's another story for another day, then. Yes. Well, and as for me, I when I first heard about the story, it was huh, an interesting story about the main two and uh, well, basically the apples plus rarity and Fluttershy going to Manhattan and well, getting involved in some diamond heists, which was pretty interesting. And when I first read the first issue, which is issue twenty one, the art was a bit off for me because I was not used to this one. And, you know, after a few viewings or after reading a few pages, I got into it, not that bad. And reading the whole story and getting to the end, I was excited to find out about the resolution of the story. Because it's one of those um, mystery cases where who was the bad guy? Who was the pony involved in the crime? Who? How are they going to solve it? Because they kind of make the story, although simple... Of 
who was the person involved? Who who was this diamond pony person? Who, who stole the diamond? How did Trixie lost the diamond and whatnot? And who is Kaiser Souza? <laughs> where <laughs> where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> That kind of situation, like it got me. Was Waldo? Oh yeah, it got me thinking, and you know what? It was a really fun read for chapter one, and in chapter two, it got a bit slowed down because of oh, is Trixie the bad guy here? Oh, nobody believes Trixie. Oh, Trixie is all alone because Trixie is a liar and whatnot. And Applejack doesn't really like Trixie because she lied. Ooh. Then she strung Applejack up and shoved an apple in her mouth. I mean, there's your yeah, slash yeah, pick yeah. right there. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but overall... Crack, I mean... Perrin, we don't have enough with Mod Pie and Trixie. Oh. We now have Applejack and Trixie. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, but overall, um, the whole story, it was really interesting. I do like the story and where they're taking it. And the main focus of the story is basically Trixie and... Bab seeds with how these two were misunderstood and them getting the redemption story in this um, comic. But I do hope this carries over to the show because I do not want to see another redemption story of Bab seeds in the show. But uh, unfortunately, we have to. Yes, we get two. We get two episodes of Babs in one season. But Brayburn hasn't had a speaking role since his first season appearance. One. Well, same goes with Hoity Toity. He only spoke in one episode, has appeared in the background of many episodes, but only had one speaking role. And Fancy Pants. I mean, we can go on at length about this. That oh, Blue Blood. <laughs> MLP is a show where you get one episode with a speaking role and then you're part of the scenery. <laughs> yep, yep. Good, yep. Good luck if you can make that, if you can get two lines in. Ah, won't do that. <laughs> well, overall, that's my thought on the comics. And James, what about you? Well, it's, uh, I'm pretty got. I think I got the end of the rope here because you said pretty much everything that I uh, that I think of the comic, and you guys, you guys pretty much defined everything that I like, and I agree with everything you said. I am very happy to see that we are so positive about these uh, two issues in particular, mm-hmm. and that uh, overall I'm getting a feel that this is a, this is a comic book arc that we all liked. Which is fantastic. I really like that because this is a very this is a very weird comic to get into. Oh yeah, it it has a lot of weird things going for it. Uh, least of all the combination of technology in it because you have things like microchips <laughs> uh, and uh, and detection uh, detection spells that tell you where the microchip is. But oh, yeah. then the security system in the museum is made out of ropes <laughs> instead of lasers, which. It is weird, but it's so creative uh, that it, it, will be, it, it will be like something that you will come up with when you're a child. Is that <laughs> you're like, I'm going to put ropes in here and I'm going to attach bells on the ropes so well, whenever they move, they ring. That's, that, that, but that is cool. I mean, that's kind of like retro, futuristic, or a current technology mix. Um, steampunk. That is <laughs> steampunk almost. That is really cool. Yeah, well... Um, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Let, let, let me keep going. I, I have a, I have a chain of thought here. But yeah, at the beginning, I, I will agree with you what you said, Norman. At the beginning, the comic looks weird. The art style, it's uh, uh, first off, it's not that easy to get into because the art style it's so out there. Mm-hmm. But then uh, there is there is one panel in particular, one little panel where uh, in the same page that they present Trixie. She's all boastful and magnificent and everything. And then you look at Applejack and she has the most I am 120% done with <laughs> this character face. <laughs> like, she's like, mm, and I'm like, sold. That, that kind of, and that kind of uh, facial expression, it keeps going throughout <laughs> the entire comic with many of the other characters. Every single character has its, mo- has its moment where uh, the art style does, does the best to take the... Uh, uh, emotion out of the characters, and that is that is fantastic. And uh, if I was to fault the story of the comic in any way, in any uh, respect, it would be the fact that there is not that much mystery about uh, this robber, yeah. the, the thief. Mm-hmm. There is not much mystery going on for for them, uh, except for one clue that Ted Anderson dropped on his Twitter. Uh, he said that uh, Trixie's uh, smoke bombs. 
they make a different sound effect than uh, the thieves. Ooh. Oopsie. So if you, yeah, if you look back on the on the comic, actually, if you look back on on issue number one, let me just find the page. You can edit this later, Norman, if you mm-hmm. want. Trixie's uh, smoke bombs they make a poof mm-hmm. uh, sound effect, while um, uh, the, the the thieves uh, bombs they make a poof sound effect. Which is the sound effect I make after Mexican food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. But uh, that, that, that is sure an interesting clue to um, look at it because you don't really notice it until someone points it out. And with Ted on his Twitter pointing that out, it's really interesting. Yeah, that is a cool Easter egg that tells you, yeah, definitely Trixie is not the one behind this. And that is the one thing that I like so much about this comic is that uh, and uh, it... Addresses what you were saying, Norman, about, oh, I don't want another episode where they redeem Trixie or where they redeem Babs. The show is smart enough to not fall in the same mistake again. Mm -hmm. Uh, They redeem... It's not like Discord levels of, uh, oh, he was a villain, he got redeemed, but then he fall back into the dark side again, but now he's completely good. Mm -hmm. Uh, With Trixie and Babs, they are not as major villains as Discord is. Uh, They got their episode where they got redeemed, and then they are now part of the good guys. Uh, they are now part of the of, of the good guys team. Going back to the Nightmare Rarity arc, that one little panel where Princess Celestia says that every pony deserves a second chance, and then Trixie pops in and she's like, maybe even a third chance. <laughs> and then we have this comic. It is proof that Trixie wants to get better. It mm. proves that she wants to get uh, she wants to get good. She doesn't want to to keep being the bad guy. She doesn't want to be the bad guy. She wants to be with the good guys. Because she learned that being the bad guy doesn't end well for her. Especially when it's a show I aim for little kids and you have to defeat the bad guy. Mm, true, true. And I like that. And also, I love the fact that they pair her up with Babsit. And their interaction in this comic, it's the best part of it. Mm-hmm. Yes, the, the 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 panels that they have together, the moments that they have together, Babsit and Trixie, they have so much chemistry and they have such a good dynamic that it, it, it almost to me it almost eclipses the rest of the th- the rest of the story, because I stop giving a crap about the diamond, about the thief, and about everything else. I forget about that, and then I focus more on Babs and Trixie because they are the most interesting element of the entire comic. They make the comic worth its price. Uh, and it also makes me makes me question why is Fladrasha in there? She's not doing that, that much. Uh, why is Rarity in there? Oh, because it has something to do with jewels. Okay, that's fine. Jewel expert. You are excuse, uh, <laughs> Rarity. But why why is Apple Lunder? Oh, okay. She is because she wants to visit her um, cousin. All right, fine. She wants to visit her cousin. Why is Applejack there? Because he has to go with Apple Bloom. Because, yeah. you know, guardian, big sister. She's not going to let her little sister go alone. Fluttershy, why are you in there in, uh, in, uh, again? <laughs> why are you in the comic? That, of... might be, that might be my biggest problem, is that I cannot figure out why Fluttershy is in the comic. She has no purpose. Mm, that, that is an I... interesting question there. That is an interesting question. I think it's because they wanted to put her in this cat... Girl sneaking suit again. Yeah, oh, oh. The, the sneaking outfit. <laughs> ah, so you're saying that Fluttershy is in there because of fun service? Yep, yep. Pretty much. Oh god. I. You know what? If there was a nice shot of her butt, Oy. that would make an excuse for it. But I'm looking at the comic right now. There is no really a shot of her butt. So <laughs> you don't talk about my wife that way, yo. Oh, shut up. <laughs> But, but actually, yeah, it, I, go ahead, go ahead. So it is funny the the number of clothing uh, choices they made for this. Apple Jack is in the Apple Jewel dress again. Fluttershy is in a costume from I think Green isn't your color. Really? They reused the outfit again. Yeah, Rarity yeah, is number in one. an assault on my eyes. Hmm. But it's kind of funny that you know these boys don't often wear clothes, and now they're reintegrating stuff from the show. Hmm. One thing I forgot to mention to you guys is that the Rainbow Dash Trixie Friends Forever came out first before this comic. So that's part of the that's part of the timeline there. Yes, and they mentioned that she's the 
Trix is the former queen of Daimondia. Yep, yep. <laughs> yes, that's a reference to issue number six, I think, of the Friends Forever. The one that she has, uh, she has that escape. Yeah, issue number six. I got it right. Mm-hmm. She escapes from that kingdom with the help of Rainbow Dash. That uh, will come in. The, that review will come in the future. Yeah. Also, I am looking at the outfits right at the outfits right now. Uh, Fluttershy has her uh, Fluttershy and Applejack actually. They have their grand galloping gala dresses. Really, Applejack's wearing a gala dress. Yeah, if you uh, look at Applejack's. That's... No, no, that is Applejack's. Do. Are you are you sure? Because if you look at her hat. That hat not only is like the one from the Grand Galloping Gala, it's also the hat that the toy actually has. Uh, I'm not going to debate with you on this, James, because I can't open the wiki now. I'm too lazy. But I'm going to believe you on the Fluttershy because it looks the same. Yeah, I'm actually going to, I'm going to say nay. Well, the, the uh, what is it? The shoes. I guess they're horseshoes. The boots. The boots. The boots. Well, Applejack's hat and maybe Fluttershy's, mm, I wouldn't call them boots, but... They they may be from the gala, but I promise that that she's wearing her Apple Jewel outfit. Now you're making me doubt. I'll have to look into that. I haven't watched that episode in forever and a half. For nay of you to say that. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm gonna finagle. <laughs> oh you. But we didn't yes. talk about the we didn't talk about the police. Oh. Uh, the way the police is portrayed in this comic uh. when it, they are actually a major element of it. Because much like the royal guard, <laughs> they're idiots. I, oh yeah, true. ineffective idiots. That, they are absolutely yeah. That, no, uh, he's right. How did they, how can they not make a background check when hiding someone in the police force? But you know what? This always happens in any show that have any six strong main characters, aka the Power Rangers and others like. The military forces and the police, they don't do much. Yeah, but it's a cliche that you can walk around. You don't have to make the police complete and absolute morons. You know what? Okay, I'm going to give it to the chief of police. He is a pretty okay cop. He does his work well, given what evidence is presented to him. And he's under a lot of stress, and he needs to finish the case fast. So, yeah... (laughs) Are you talking about Sam Elliott Pony? Because he totally looks like Sam Elliott from Tombstone. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, having just watched the TV show Gotham, uh, where they talk about finishing a case quickly and they basically accuse the wrong guy, I'm like, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't extend the olive branch. I mean, this guy, basically, the, the, the chief... Oh, now I've got to search for his name. I know... Chief Stablemaker. Oh, God. Which... Okay, that, that, I'm sure there's something terribly wrong with that name. But basically, after after Trixie loses the diamond and the police storm in, it turns out it's a trap. He's all thanking her. He's even uh, bowing, buying into the theatrics. But the minute things go wrong, he accuses Trixie and accuses the, main... tri- the people who happen to be standing next to her. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, you were not a detective. Can't blame him, man. It's one of those situations. Oh, I can totally blame him. You, you can't just say, "Oh, you're you're a warm body right next to me." I'm going to accuse you. <laughs> uh, no comment. No comment. It's very similar to the kind of uh, cops that uh, we were seeing in movies from the sixties mm, and the seventies. Yep, yep, yep. You know, the, the the kind that the kind of that. Uh, Oh, Makrowski, you're off the line. You're off the case. <laughs> Give your badge and your gun right now. Oh, I'm going to accuse you. And then you have uh, Charles Bronson coming into town and shooting everybody dead before the police gets the thumb out of their asses and start doing something useful. That's kind of the police here in this comic. Uh, yeah, cool, true, true. Or at least in the first issue, up until the second issue, where they, uh, towards the end, they start doing their job proper. But it's not until a child... It's not until Bob C does a, an investigative job way more useful than what we have seen on CSI. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. She's, one look, one look at this, uh, at, at this officer, and she's like, she's Rough Diamond, she's the thief. <laughs> How do you know? Oh, because she has a smudge on her cutie mark. Wink. And I'm like, uh, uh, okay, Grissom. Get get out of the <laughs> series. This 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 little pony has a lot more in, in, intuition than you do. Oh my god! You know what? I, 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 that is kind of contrived. I know I they know. are they are constrained by you know a two issue story arc and everything, 
But come on, you could put more clues in the previous issue. Anyway, but like, who would have suspected one of the police uh, ponies? True, true. Oh. But you know what? I, in all, sorry, go ahead. In honesty, I suspected the police ponies right away since they're the ones who opened the safe. Mm. I can't say I can't say this comic really held me in suspense, wondering could Trixie be in on it. It's pretty clear from the get go she's not. Mm. True, true, and and. You know, process of elimination is like okay. It's probably one of the police ponies. Yeah, but you know what? It it they missed a really good opportunity here to make do with the story that they had because if they could complex the story by giving us more clues so that we could try and solve it by ourselves, that would be more awesome. But given what they have, it's kind of understandable. But, you know, I would really love if they could have a complex, a Detective Conan kind of mystery case on their hands. I'm just wondering, between Ruff Diamond and Jade Singer, you think there'd be a market for cutie mark alteration? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> uh... Going to the tattoo artist. In the end, they are going to be relevant. <laughs> yep. Do you want to alter yeah. your cutie mark permanently so you don't have to have a problem with mm-hmm. it? <laughs> Come to us. <laughs> yeah. But one more thing I have to mention to you guys is this. We begin the comic with... A magic show by Trixie, which obviously granted her talents is a show pony, which is good and awesome. But in a world of magical power unicorns and whatnot, how believable is this stage play? You know, it's like, yay, she teleported, took the diamond away. And, you know, it's like, dude, my grandma who's a unicorn can do that. Can I... Uh- uh- uh, go ahead, Silver, but I will pontify what you just said, Norman, mm. with a better example. But go for it, go for it, Silver. Well, the, the funny thing is that uh, I think there are different levels of magic. The only ponies I've seen teleport are Twilight, Celestia, possibly Luna, mm-hmm. and uh, Sunset Shimmer. Mm-hmm. Which you know, we all we all like to imagine if we had a unicorn magic, we'd be you know flipping all over the place. Mm-hmm. Although I do that with profanity. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. That's not a word. <laughs> but uh, so I can imagine that if Trixie is accomplishing feats that your average unicorn can't do, mm-hmm. and she, instead of compensating with magical talent, she has stage show, yeah, I can kind of go with that. But it'd be funnier if Trixie had been an Earth poet. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. It's a missed opportunity there, but. But then she wouldn't have been a foil for Twilight, which I think is where a lot of the appeal for her character comes in. Okay, that is the that is it. Yeah. That is it. That's true, why. True. Uh, that's why Trixie is the, is a unicorn because he has to be the antagonist for Twilight. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I'm not. I'm not saying that this is a major issue, but I'm just saying that in a world of magical powers, it's readily available. It's like common thing, like water. Somebody doing a magic show on stage is like. How impressed could you be? Because I'm 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 on the page where Trixie does her tricks, and it's like pick a card from a deck and guess it right, throw a knife, um, knife throwing, and escape artist, and also uh, illusionist. A few of the tricks there are easily done by unicorns, which is well, it's the unicorn magic thingy. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but eh, it's like. You can do magic, so how impressive is this? Well, this is... Okay, and this is where I come up with my pointification of your point. Because Michael Bay still exists. (laughs) Explain yourself! I will explain myself. I will explain myself. You know how you have... uh, Okay, I will go back to 2011, Mm -hmm. alright? You have Super 8. Mm -hmm. uh, A movie directed by J.J. Abrahams. Okay, J.J. Abrahams, with all of the flaws that this guy has and everything, lens flare all the way, blah, 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 whatever. And yet he makes a, a, a movie that could live in the 80s with a lot of heart, great special effects, fantastic action, fantastic characters, great rhythm and everything. A fantastic execution of a movie, all right? Mm-hmm. And then you have Transformers Dark of the Moon. Everybody went to watch Transformers Dark of the Moon. Almost nobody went to watch Super 8. Transformers Dark of the Moon got three Academy Award nominations. And Super 8 got none. 
uh, uh, Transformers Dark of the Moon became the highest grossing movie of the year with over one billion dollars in box office mm-hmm. worldwide. All right. We all know Michael Bay is not a good director. Mm-hmm. Even I, who kind of like the guy, admit that he is not a good director. Yet his movies still attract a lot of people. Now, in a world of magical ponies, you have Twilight, who is super talented, super good, super great. But I'm pretty sure if she tries to put up a show, people will not go watch it, even though she's very talented. However, they will rather go watch Trixie. Even though she's not as talented as she's, she's not a, as good. Why? Because Trixie is an entertainer. She knows what people want to watch. She knows they don't want to have a lecture or they don't want to have anything complicated. They just want to watch some silly, dumb, rather simple, but very well presented magic tricks. That's the th- it's about the, the, the wrapping. It's about the presentation. Trixie knows that better than any of of the other unicorns. I think that w- that's why they keep going to her shows mm. because she knows how to present them. She's a she's a co- uh, she's a, she's a show pony after all. Mm-hmm. If she's not good at that, she has no talent. It's not about being able to teleport an entire town on, or make a a barrier around the city. It's about Oh, look at this apple. It's a great apple, isn't it? And I'm going to sh- switch it to my other hoof. Oh, it switched to my other hoof. And all the people with that uh, stupid trick. And she's good at it. You see the parallelism between there? Now that you mention it that way, I can understand and I can at least understand why Trixie or why the ponies in this universe are still impressed with her because it's a show and yeah, stage shows are fun. Just like uh, watching a Magic the Gathering tournament, like, why do you watch it? It's just a bunch of cardboard on the table. It's just the people controlling the cardboard and the rules written on the cardboard makes them entertaining. Yep. I don't know if you could get the Yu-Gi-Oh! hologram thing going. I'd watch more Magic the uh, Gathering. Uh, <laughs> Silver, I need to link you to a video that's, that someone did that really did that. Oh, God. Isn't there a video game, card game, that it's, it's only in Japan? That you can like Eye collect of all of these cards. Yes. No. 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 It's not Eye of Judgment. No. no it didn't came to 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 uh, to Europe or uh, or any of the other any other Western world. Oh damn it! What was the name of it? Uh, they, they, they literally it's like an arcade game, and you have a deck of cards, mm-hmm. and you put them on the on the table of the arcade game, and it will read the oh. barcode. On the cards, and it will make effects in the game on the screen well, as you're there's playing. There's multiple card games in Japan for that. There's even a soccer game for that. But you know what? I think we're digressing since we're. Finished. Yeah, we're talking about card games. We're supposed to be talking about this comic. Yeah, I think. Oh on my god! Talk about, lack <laughs> <laughs> talk about lack of focus. <laughs> yeah, but I think we already mentioned all the things that we need to say about this one because what else can we say? Because we've already told the story from start to beginning we already mentioned who's the villain who's the bad guy who's the good guy character redeem and whatnot and we already solved the case so i think from this point on i think we're done well we've got we've still got the characterization of rough diamond mm. all one panel of it <laughs> yeah that, we're, one we're, single panel yeah. yes i could have gotten we're, away with i could have gotten away with this if we wrote it for you kids and you mangy dog <laughs> Actually, you're not far off. She says, you darn do-gooders. <laughs> oh, God. Who says that Which, anymore? Well, I thought, wow, you are very polite for someone who's about to be carted off to what I'm assuming is a pony jail. Which will have well, all of, what, three inmates? <laughs> top total? What, what, did you, what did you expect her to be saying? Bleep, 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 I don't bleep, think bleep, they will allow swearing. Bleep, 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 bleep. No, you know what? Now that you say it, it will be a lot funnier if instead of saying words, she will be just saying like cannons, marks. explosions, yeah. exclamation marks, <laughs> symbols in Chinese uh, that, signi- that mean other things. You, like that, that would be really funny. You know what? I think we're gonna touch on that on the next uh, review. <laughs> I uh, yep. <laughs> uh, people will just have to wait. What we mean? Oh, yeah, you're right. You know, I know what I, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yes, I I just caught that myself. <laughs> but, no, no, it, partly I just find it funny that she's calling them do-gooders. It's like, yeah, I know I'm I know I'm the villain in this story. I'm gonna own it. But and then the chief admits he's an idiot. <laughs> yep. 
Well, it's all about admitting your, admitting your mistakes. He wasn't the bad guy of the comic, but he definitely was the guy who was always wrong. Oh, true so. that, true that. But anywho, James, uh, final thoughts? Well, final thoughts. Uh, you want to start with me? No, I'm just asking final thoughts. Aside from a few issues with the pacing on the writing, because I think the conclusion came in way too fast and kind of out of nowhere, mm-hmm. even though they explain it somehow, I think this is one of the best arcs out there. Uh, only because the interaction between Babsit and Trixie is just unbelievable. Mm. Is that I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting those two characters to get along so well, and it's fantastic that when you put them together, you realize they they are not much different. In that they they are both redeemed villains that are trying to move away from being uh, from being bad to others. And that is something that I love so much. That's my favorite kind of character, is that the, the, the bad guy who's not a bad guy anymore, who's, who wants to become a good guy, and he's fighting or she's fighting against prejudice, against uh, people making it difficult for them, uh, uh, the, the previous story, every other bad thing that they have done. And it is great because when they have to prove they are good, it's genuine that they really want to prove they are good. So it's it's great. Just for that aspect, this this comic gets easy, my, my seal of approval. This is an excellent mm-hmm. uh, uh, story arc. No problem no problem with it. Any other issue is not a deal breaker for me whatsoever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And who's next, James? Oh, well, if we go alphabetical, uh, you should go, Norman. All right, then. So this is the last two issue comics for the My Little Pony comics, right? For now, because we got no idea what's going to be in the future. Because in issue twenty three and so on, it's all one issue, one issue. So this is an interesting way to end the two parter for now, because we've got like amazing two parters. Like we got the pirate arc. Sorry, no, we got the. Yeah, the pirate arc was a two-parter, yeah. and the bookworm was a two-parter. Yeah, the bookworm, Big Mac and the, and the Box of Nails mm-hmm. was also a two-parter, and so the Cadence the story and... of Cadence and Shining Armor. Yeah. Yes. So to end this one with a two-parter here, it was a pretty nice story. I mean, it's not the best in the numbered issue, but it was a not bad story, and it's worthy to be put on to with the rest. And as for art-wise, it takes a lot of getting used to, but coloring saves it. Storytelling is a bit iffy in certain places, but it's okay. I won't say this is the best, but it's deserved to be there with the rest. That's all I'm going to say. Not the best, but with the rest. I like the rhyme scheme there. Hey, I'm a rapper, yeah. yo. Word. <laughs> Kiki <Kick-a-dee-da. laughs> uh, I can say, I, I won't say that this comic didn't really stand, doesn't really stand out in my memory mm-hmm. when you ask me about my favorite comic arcs. Mm-hmm. Maybe because Manhattan itself didn't feel all that vibrant. That when, as they're running around and they're hopping on subways and trying to get through, they're going between locations, but the whole of Manhattan just isn't as much a feeling as the, the galloping ghost islands and the pirate <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. or or the absurdities of, uh, of the Cades of Shining Armors high school. <laughs> yeah. Or even Ponyville. <laughs> or Ponyville. Ponyville is always sort of a character unto itself. Mm-hmm. Perhaps that's one thing that, that pulled it away from me, that Manhattan itself was not really prominent. Even though we see we don't get to see very much of it very often. Mm-hmm. But I, too, love the uh, interaction between Babs and Trixie and, and the fact that they're acknowledging their flaws in the past and trying to move forward. Mm-hmm. And it's not simplified. Well, I, Trixie says, I'm trying to be a good pony. But she's not like, I have learned that evil is wrong. Sort of the, sort of the contradiction of uh, of rough diamonds, you do gooders. <laughs> it's more like I just want to help. It's not ooh, I want to be the goodest goody good ever. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. just I want to help, and that's far more sincere than uh, sometimes right and wrong are are oversimplified mm, true that, or true dumbed that, down. True that, true that. So all in all, an enjoyable arc. It's not really top of my list, and as you say. Our main six are there, mostly for in a way fan service. Hey, she's wearing that dress from so and so. Well, as we mentioned about redeem character, we've got Discord, Trixie, Babs, and to add on to that list is Sunset Shimmer. She's an interesting redeem character, which 
<laughs> I can't believe how movie she got. Mm. But that's a story for another Indeed. day. Indeed. And James, what's the next um, comic review? Oh, the next comic that we're going to review next week is going to be uh, the Celestia Micro, right? Uh -huh. Yep, yep. Yeah, that will be uh, the Celestia Micro, written by Georgia Ball and with art by Amy Meverson. Oh, yeah. So, um, we hope to see you guys uh, listening to that one, and we hope you enjoyed this one review. So, uh, thank you all so much for listening. I have been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. Now you see me, and now you don't. <laughs> Oh, please. And I am the irreverent and somewhat inconsequential Silver Quill. Thank you all guys for listening. Have a good one. Sayonara. Bye bye. Adios. <laughs>